we start the morning on the issue of the first aspect of our security. You had breakfast, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You're preparing for lunch, aren't you? Yeah. And you bought your chicken and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. So you want to be sure that when you sit down that there is security um, on your table. Well, the revelation about chicken parts, uh, <laughs> it was made two weeks ago um, by to the Joint Select Committee. It found fraud. The, the hearing was, of course, on food fraud. And the Joint uh, Select Committee uh, heard that chicken parts as old as five years old, frozen for five years, marked not fit for human consumption in the United States, being sold here locally as fresh poultry. This, of course, raises the question of food security for Trinidad and Tobago. It is hoped that my next guest, who is a food safety inspector, former Caribbean Poultry Association president and former CEO of Kariri, can shed some light on what consumers are buying, what we are getting ready to prepare this morning, and how unprotected our food supply is. His name is Desmond Ali. Mr. Ali, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Reddy, and a very good morning to you and a very good morning to your listeners in Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you for making the time to be with us. The Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries is responsible for licensing. We understand they license food import into the country, but the Ministry of Health is responsible for the quality that's on the shelves. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. All right, so we've got two ministries here in the beginning. However, the agency or the body that's set up for testing food is the Chemical Food and Drug Division of the Ministry of Health. They are responsible for testing food products. It is reported they have not been working for the past two years. On one hand, I heard it was one year, then I heard two years. What is your best understanding of this? How long have they not been working? This is the Food Testing Center, um, which is in the Ministry of Health, the Chemical Food and Drug Division. Yes, sir. The Chemistry, Food and Drugs Division, as far as I know, has the labs, they have not been operational for about two and a half years. And they have the, they have the regulatory responsibility mm -hmm. for the Food and Drug Ordinance. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they are the ones who have the mm. uh, re regulatory uh, responsibility for testing and ensuring that all food products that enter Trinidad and Tobago do, in fact, meet mm. the requirements of human consumption, which would be food safety, and uh, nutrition. So, so you as a former food inspector would go out there, you would see something, there would be some questions about it, and what happens? I am trying to understand the procedure and the, the, the importance. I mean, they are testing center, the Chemical Food and Drug Division of the Ministry. They are a food testing center, of course, that is scary because for two and a half years, we had no way of testing. Is that what that statement means? That is exactly what that statement means, except that the Chemistry, Food and Drugs Division could mm. in fact contract laboratories outside mm -hmm. to do some of the testing mm -hmm. for them. They can contract the university or mm -hmm. Kariri or any of the private labs operating in the country to do that testing. Mm -hmm. But we must bear in mind that the Chemistry Food and Drugs Division, mm -hmm. the food side of it consists of two distinct elements. One element is the inspection element, mm -hmm. the people who actually go out there and walk the roads. And the second aspect are the laboratories, where the actual evaluation for quality mm -hmm. and food safety goes on. All right. So uh, by, by way of clarity, give me the exact procedure. Desmond Ali is my guest here this morning. He is a food safety inspector, and he's the former CEO of Career. We're very happy to have him here. What is the procedure for inspecting food on grocery shelves in Trinidad and Tobago? What is the procedure? That's, that's a good question. Uh, there are a number of agencies which have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. The one is the regional authorities, because the regional authorities do have public health inspectors who go out there and examine places where food is retailed or sold. Mm -hmm. So there's a, that responsibility. The Chemistry, Food and Drugs Division also has a responsibility, and their responsibility for de deals with things like labeling, it deals with things like food fraud. It deals with issues related to the fact that there are standards in the Chemistry, Food, and Dogs mm -hmm. Ordinance that those foods that are out there on the shelves must meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am trying to get to the mind of one of the inspectors, and, and, and I'm trying to work this out. How are inspectors aware of bad food when they don't have, I mean, outside of the obvious, if you see something that expired, it's expired, but they don't have um, access to sh shipping manifests, importers, and supermarkets can, if they so desire, change expiration dates and repackage stuff. How does an inspector to go about uh, dealing with that kind of fraud that may not would not be on the shelves is that his responsibility firstly and if not whose yeah let me correct a statement you just made mm -hmm. that, and that is that the chemistry food and drugs division does have the regulatory responsibility for examining foods that come into the country mm -hmm. 
they have an inspector who is based in the long room at customs every single day. Okay. And his role is mm. to examine the manifests on the ships that are coming into the country to ensure that the food products that are entering the country meet certain requirements. You have just made very clear to me that there is no chance that um, a, an importer can do this without it being, I mean, as far as switching anything, because if we've got somebody inside of there down the, at the docks looking at the containers coming in, they can see, in fact, yes, this met, meet the standard. So if you have a case where something um, that's m labeled in the United States not fit for human consumption arriving here, how then can it end up on the shelves of the supermarkets is my question. Yeah, the inspector who is based in the long room is not really examining containers. He is examining the entries, the customs entries that are coming to the country. The paperwork. That's exactly mm -hmm, true. And mm -hmm. bear in mind that he's got to examine thousands of entries. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. only when something on an entry raises a question that he will then pull that entry aside and have a look at the container. Desmond Ali is my guest here this morning, and I understand that very clear, Mr. Ali. Here is my question. Trinidad and Tobago is a small country. Uh, everybody knows something. Everybody's going to rumor something, and then, of course, you have to track it down and make sure that you can prove it. But it has not uh, escaped the ears of inspectors, I am sure, that for many uh, years, for a long period, folks have been saying, because I've heard other food inspectors utter Listen, the stuff coming in here does not meet muster. So uh, this has not been a secret. My question to you, has it been a secret? Is I mean, before the JSC hearing two weeks ago, is it, um, is, is it advisable to take the position that nobody in the food inspectorate knew of this? I, think it's, I don't think it's true to say that. I think people knew that there were problems associated with that. But one, one of the problems that the, the inspectorate Wherever the inspectorate is based, mm -hmm. the inspectorate is based in chemistry, food, and drugs, as I said, based mm -hmm. in the regional health authorities, based in the veterinary public health department. Mm -hmm. We simply do not have enough feet on the ground and hands to do the work that's necessary to be done. And, and mm -hmm. you've got to bear in mind as well that the structure of the food industry changed dramatically in 1994. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that in 1994, we signed the World Trade Organization Agreement in Marrakesh. One of the important elements of the F World Trade Organization was the introduction of food and agribusiness products into international trade. Mm -hmm. Because the whole dr driver of the WTO had to do with subsidies in the U.S., subsidies in Europe, and subsidies in Japan. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. Americans were making the point that subsidies, subsidies in the U.S., were only 33% at farm gate prices. Subsidies in Europe were about 45 to 50% at farm gate. Mm -hmm. But subsidies in Japan were over 60% at farm gate. So the uh, North Americans were particularly keen to see this anomaly sorted out. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. wanted to introduce food as a major item of international trade. As it is. And mm -hmm. that is why after 1994, the supply chain of food became so complex because food for the first time became a major element of global trade. Uh, be, be became um, recognized as such. <laughs> as we know, it, has been, exactly. it has been for a long time. But explain to me this, and I just need to go back just a little bit, and thanks for the WTO clarity. Uh, clarity. I need to go back just a little bit. If something is marked in the United States, not fit for human consumption, I understand the man at the docks, he's going to look at the, at, at the manifest. Would the manifest not give some indication as to what the product is, what is there? Not necessarily. What happens is that the manifest gives uh, certain information regarding the product that's imported. Yeah, chicken, and it's uh, so many pounds and costs so much about it. Exactly. It that's gives it? a tariff number, it gives mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. Mm. But, and it is up to the inspector uh, to determine whether the product meets the food safety requirements for Trinidad and Tobago. And let me clarify what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. One of the requirements uh, mm. of most food products is the date when the product is manufactured. Mm -hmm. That is not so for chicken products in particular. The date of slaughter is not stated. And that's one of the things we are trying to fix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have developed mm -hmm. a standard and one of the major elements of the standard is that the label must carry the date of slaughter so that the 
consumer, when he sees the product, knows how old the product is. And by, by convention, product uh, like chicken is mm -hmm. normally sold up to 180 mm -hmm. days after the date of slaughter. And that's a very important point. Now, frozen chicken can maintain its food safety elements for about a year. If it's cut up, it can maintain those elements for about nine months. Mm. But that's only food safety. Food quality includes food safety and some other things as well. Mm -hmm. One of the other things, and I must make this point, mm. is that the fat in meat products deteriorates over time, even in cold storage, and goes rancid. Mm -hmm. And it is well known that there are rancid products of fats that can be cancer-causing for livers and kidneys in humans. One of the, the curious things about what you said in explaining that WTO and the uh, Americans pushing for it to be regarded as a major item in world trade, I know the United States introduced where they can put a chip on, on, on meat or product and traced from day of slaughter to where it has gone, how long it's been stored, et cetera, et cetera. That is the, 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 the technology. Do we have the technology to have that kind, to follow that kind of information? Because from what you just said, said to me, and I don't, I mean no disrespect, but the person down at the dock sounds to me like a document processor. I mean, really. I mean, True. you know, he yes, looks at the documents yes. and he says, hey, this, this meat must, uh, okay, go ahead. And uh, voila, voila, bing, bang could be in there. <laughs> and you just deal with that. Yeah, but he, the person, in, in the in the long room at customs yes he is uh, taking the position mm. that when the ministry of agriculture approves the import mm -hmm. permit mm -hmm. that in fact the person who does who mm. does that approval process has gone through the documentation in great detail especially in respect of issues like the age of the product right and the the how the product was stored, and whether the, what the disease status is of the origin of the product. 